Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 401 of Love at First Send with me, Persilays, live on YouTube as always. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. But if you are watching the live, a very special thank you to you because I gave next to no notice of this particular episode. It, it's been one of those days and I think it's going to be one of those weekends where all the best laid plans, etc, etc. And I looked at the calendar and I looked at my watch and I thought, right, if I don't get some videos in now, I'm not going to be able to do it at all this weekend. But, but a few of you have tuned in. So thank you very much. First comment goes to... A, who says, good afternoon, good afternoon to you as well. Eco Jock is here too, saying hi all. So is uh, Aria. Rachel says hello. Melanie says hello from Washington, D.C. David is here as well. So is Woozy. So actually, it looks as though it's all the usual suspects. You're all here, which is great. Gavin is here too, saying you who all. What a nice surprise, says Proto Society. Guess what? It's kind of a nice surprise for me as well. Um, the the plan for today is that we're just going to do two, I shouldn't say just two videos, we are going to do two videos back to back, starting with this one, brand new from uh, Tom Ford. And I will very, very quickly say, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. And um, in case I forget, because I always forget, I will say now that if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay, let's get straight on with uh, the scent at hand. Um, this has been around for a, um, a little while, so some of you may have had a chance to try it. If you um, have got a view on it, I would be very, very grateful if you would care to share it with me. This is new, new, newish from Tom Ford. It's called Nir, Nir Mystère, so Mysterious Myrrh. Oh, Dusan, thank you very much. Happy birthday to Rich Mitch. Um, okay, perfect. Happy birthday, Rich. But I didn't see if Rich's name popped up. So if and when you watch this video, Rich, very, very happy birthday to you. And thank you very much for mentioning that, Dusan. So um, everybody send good thoughts in the direction of very, very uh, regular viewer and loyal supporter, Rich. Anyway, this is just, I guess, translates as Mysterious Myrrh, and it is credited by some sources um, to Rodrigo Flores Rue, but as a lot of you will know, the Tom Ford brand still, still does not officially release the names of their perfumers, which uh, still kind of doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, I have uh, worn this on a couple of occasions, uh, and I've also got a pre-sprayed blotter, a bl blotter that was sprayed about an hour ago. But let us see how we get on with this one. Uh, patchouli Pappy, I think, is... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Anticipating the, the rest of this a review because they say, seemed a little redundant to me, in my, in my opinion. Smells good but not worth the price tag. I wonder if this is going to be yet another video where the issue of price comes up. It is becoming more and more of an issue. But anyway, first, let us talk about the perfume. I don't really have a press blurb about it. I just have I've got the tiniest little bit of an internet blurb. Let's go with the, with the initial spray. Okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at Eric's comment as well. So, what do we get? To my nose, you do immediately get something that is that is resinous, as you would hope from a perfume that has got myrrh in its name. Um, resinous, maybe slightly balsamic in the sense of a kind of sweet powderiness that comes through. I understand that there is a vanilla note in there, but it but it doesn't go, um, it, it, it stays resinous, um, which is to say that it's got that kind of woody, slightly smoky, slightly rubbery feel to it. Um, it doesn't become overtly, prominently fungal, because if you, if you smell uh, a myrrh ingredient, that one of its defining characteristics is that it's got this kind of really interesting mushroomy type of note to it. I mean, a, a note that personally I really, really like. Um, and what is interesting um, is that at the top, it is very, very, very definitely um, lifted by 
a marked citrus note, none too sweet, but maybe something like a kind of bergamot mandarin type combination that is doing a lot of heavy lifting at the top. And it it, it is that kind of structure, the sort of citrus opening leading to something resinous, and in a way, the colour of the bottle that made me think, oh my goodness, is this a kind of revisiting of um, YSL M7 from many, many years ago, which was composed by Jacques Cavalier and perhaps one other perfumer, I can't remember. And that was from the time when Tom Ford was um, creative director at uh, YSL. But Tom Ford, as far as we're aware, is now no longer at his own brand. And so I don't know if this is one of the perfumes that he still worked on or whether this is one of the first ones that didn't have anything to do with Tom Ford. Um, and I think somebody said the word redundant. I mean, a lot of you are already talking about price. Woozy says for that price, if you're in the EU, you're better off traveling to Paris and buying Serge Lutin's La Mire, although La Mire is quite a different perfume. That That's sort of very, very aldehydically resinous, different sort of scent, although beautiful. I do like it. Um, Cheap Imitation says, try this recently. I like the opening, but the dry down annoyed me. Yes, I think we may have to talk about the dry down as well. Uh, Rachel says, fascinating, love the material, myrrh, and so excited to hear your thoughts. My sample is on the way. And a lot of you are sounding fairly lukewarm about it. And I think that's my main impression of it as well is that it it's 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 mostly mostly it's mostly very very pleasant um ty says i feel like we've covered everything oh by the way well done for staying awake ty, i feel like we've covered everything already and it's only been a few minutes yes because because i i sort of think is this one of these scents that immediately kind of announces what it's going to be and there isn't a huge amount to say about it I don't find it particularly mysterious. I think it sort of announces everything that it's got to say within the opening few minutes, barring the, the, the sort of dry down issue, which we will get to in a few moments. It's not, it, it's not overly resinous. It's not overly smoky. It's not sort of overly anything. Um, in fact, there was, you know, there was one time where I was wearing it a few days ago, and I thought, I wonder if the mystery is where you, you're sort of kind of smelling it, thinking, well, where's the mystery? Ha ha! <laughs> See what they did there, because it 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 does it does seem quite straightforward, uh, very sort of straight up and down, uh, no revelations, no major surprises along the way, except maybe, and may, and then perhaps I will reach for the pre-sprayed one now just to see if it's already doing that. Yeah, except that the closer and closer you get to the dry down, the more you realize that in the base you have got a none too shy dosage of synthetic sandalwoods. Again, the kind of benchmark or the low mark for when these synthetic sandalwoods are overdone at the moment is something like Penhaligon's Halfetti. Thank goodness this is not a Halfetti, although maybe the folks at Tom Ford were wishing it were a Halfetti because of course Halfetti has been um, extremely successful for, for Penhaligon's. But you get, you, you can't help but get towards the end that very, very, very particular inflection that marks out some of these synthetic sandalwood materials from the real thing. And it's very, very difficult to describe what they do, but it, but it's almost as though they're try-hard sandalwoods. Of course, what makes genuine sandalwood so beautiful is that it seems so effortless, so seamless. So it presents its its creaminess, its milkiness um, in the most kind of humble, meditative sort of way. And then that's a word that I've used a lot in relation to sandalwood. The synthetics seem to push the woodiness and go for a kind of crazed diffusiveness. And when that is overdone, um, it, it's just really, really, really stomach churning. Unless, of course, you're talking about something like, you know, Nasamato's Black Afghano, where th then then the sort of stomach churning weirdness is is, is the raison d'être, and, and and there's so much more going on in Black Afghano that which is which is why I love it. But but if you go to something like Penhaligon's Halfetti, you just think, oh my goodness, this is just a sledgehammer, and it is about to give me a splitting migraine. I need to get away from it. Thank goodness this doesn't do that, 
but it is a similar type of scent, if you see what I mean. Um, if I want a beautiful myrrh, says Michael Niguez, I'll stick with uh, Mysterieuse from, uh, I guess, from Cartier. That's more about incense, isn't it? I haven't smelt that one for a while. There, oh, gosh, there's an Eur Mysterious shaped hole in my collection, that's for sure. And I keep meaning to, well, the, the list of things I keep meaning to get is, is very, very long, right? Uh, Rachel says that's a really, really great analysis. Thank you very much. I, well, perhaps you'll agree. Let us know if you agree when your, um, when your sample comes along. W what does the brand say? The brand says, Mir Mister unlocks the senses. <laughs> well, it may be just about sticks the key in the lot. I don't know. Through powerfully grounding myrrh essences and a modern ultra vanille accord, uh, at capturing a richly luminous aura. Yes, even the description's really, really trying hard. Uh, the key fragrance notes are a myrrh duo, supposedly composed of myrrh essence and myrrh resinoid orpure. And orpure is the um, trademarked Givaudan brand for some of their best um, natural materials. Sandalwood album Australia orpure, so an Australian sandalwood, and an ultra vanille accord. I don't know why they just don't call it an ultra vanilla accord, but there we are. Um... <sighs> And its its diffusiveness is interesting because it it stays quite close to the skin. Maybe that's something that ties in with the kind of mystery tag. You know, the, it's a, it's supposed to be a scent that you kind of have to get close to before you can smell it. It it doesn't have a huge sillage, which I actually found quite curious. That was a that was almost a kind of plus point for it because I thought, okay, you're doing heavy hitting materials, but you're not letting them shout too loudly. So tick for that. Um, but. <sighs> It's just, it's just a little bit unremarkable. It's like, you know, if it, if it does contain a few drops of these really amazing raw materials, then I think maybe they should have been given in a slightly more interesting party to go along to, if you see what I mean. But, 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 I have been delaying the issue for 12 minutes now. Um, Ty says, unlocks the senses. Well, in that case, I don't think we used a key, maybe a rotten branch or a broomstick. Anyway. We do again find ourselves needing to talk about price because, um, and I'm, I'm just going to talk about pound sterling. You know, you will be able to convert it to your own currencies. Although it would be interesting to find out in your own currencies actually how these prices compare. So this is a 50 mil bottle. The 50 mil bottle in the UK on the Tom Ford website right now will set you back 290 pounds. 290 pounds. That, last time I checked, I believe was the price of a hundred mils of Frederick Mal Portrait of a Lady. Um, Portrait of Frederick Mal also happens to be uh, an Estee Lauder, um, Estee Lauder brand. Oh, Eric says it's $395 here. Um, I forget where you are, Eric. Is that is that American dollars? I'm guessing it is. Now, that's for 50 mils. Um, if you really, really like the sound of it, then you can treat yourselves to a oh I've lost the page because they don't want me to they don't want me to reveal the price. You can treat yourselves to 250 mils, you know, one of those huge um, decanter type bottles. And that is 685 pounds, nearly 700 pounds. So okay, I suppose in terms of value, it is much better value because you get five times as much in that large bottle as you do in this one. <laughs> Gavin says, I got 100 mils of Garlin Emma for 81 quid recently. Tom Ford, you are paying for the marketing mostly. Oh, and Eric says, yes, it is uh, US dollars. So $395. That seems quite, because isn't, isn't three, uh, so that's nearly $400. Isn't that almost like 340, 350 pounds? Does that mean that it's a rare case of something costing more in the US? I don't know. Um, 100 mils of Amouage is 230 pounds, says Machi. Um, although some of those amouages are getting pretty expensive as well. Aperol Spritz says, a ridiculous price as we see nowadays for scented water. And Rachel, thank you, Rachel says, you can get a Chanel exclusive for less uh, and a larger quantity. So, I don't know. And I thought we could spend, you know, literally maybe two minutes, no more, 
actually discussing what we, in our own relative ways, in scattered as we are across the globe, what, what we mean by affordability. Um, this is probably the thing, the kind of thing that is best done in a poll on, on YouTube. And I may go on the community tab at some point over the next few days and do like a kind of poll. But I'm just really curious, what for you nowadays, you know, here we are in mid-October 2023, what for you counts as an affordable scent? And let's say, let's say for like 100 mils, because of course, you know, you can go out and buy things for 30, you know, 30 mils, 50 mils. Um, so not something where you, you know, something where by affordable, I guess I mean, you know, veering towards the cheap. So we know that there are perfumes out there that you would be willing, you know, to sell a kidney for or remortgage your house for because you love them so much. But what nowadays for you counts as a fairly cheap price for 100 mils? So Alice says in Czechia and Sephora, it equals a, oh, this one equals a whopping 317 pounds. That, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. But Julie Pappy says a couple of months ago, I had already seen Eben Fumé for 50% off retail and another 10% off the cosmetics company store here in the US. And that's, that's the, that's the discounted shops of the Estee Lauder company, isn't it? Estee Lauder outlet, essentially. Yes, thank you. I'll see Mir there soon. Yes, I've seen a lot of Tom Fords that we have a, we have a local one down, um, in Portsmouth down on the South Coast. Ty says, 55 pounds is the sort of upper limit of affordability. I stand by that. Okay. And, and this is, you know, there's no judgment going on here, but I'm just really, really curious what we mean now by affordable. Um, Gavin says, even Egoist is a hundred quid for a hundred mils here. And that used to be a bargain. Uh, Michael says Tom Ford is not targeting the affordable minded segment of the market. No, 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 I agree. Absolutely. And I think they're making that very, very clear. But but I'm just wondering what affordable means nowadays. Woozy says 300 dirhams. No, sorry, that's not the AED is dirhams. 300 um, Australian dollars. Sorry, dirhams. 300 Australian dollars for me is the middle point of high end niche fragrance. I don't know the conversion for Australian dollars. Uh, Aria says, when I originally bought my 200 mil Chanel exclusives in the early 2010s, I think they were around $250 each. Uh, Smark says, I bought 100 mils of Arpege for about 40 euros. That's me sorted, waiting for prices to go down. You may be waiting a while. I don't think prices will ever actually go down. Uh, Stephen says, max I'd pay for 100 mils is about £130. I'll wait for the bulk discounters if it's more than that. Um, Ty says, I can buy fragrances that are more than that, but I don't. Always seek out deals wherever I can. Yeah, and I, thanks for making that distinction. I know that a lot of us will make our own personal decisions about what we, we don't mind paying a lot of money for, but it's this, what, what counts as cheap nowadays? Because I think you didn't have to go back very, very far to legitimately say that, you know, 40 pounds was cheap and you could get quite a few things for 40 pounds interestingly you could, you could get a lot of lauders um i'm not sure what 40 pounds would get you nowadays uh big miss cabbage says oh now why does that why is that handle familiar <laughs> um if it, if you are who i'm thinking of thank you very very much for the um for the nightmare before christmas uh big miss cabbage says i feel like i can't make a judgment call without actually understanding how much the ingredients cost how much of them are in there and what the labor practices are for sourcing them okay fair enough uh claire says thinking of stretching the budget to a chanel exclusive yeah well, well that's fine the, the, you know um aria says affordable to me now is anything below 200 dollars for niche Interesting. And let's give the final word on this to Sandra. For me, 250 euros for 100 mils is starting to be expensive. Ah, interesting, starting. See, for me, 250 euros for 100 mils is, is definitely expensive, not starting to be. But I did pay 345 euros for Amouage Overture Woman, beautiful piece of work, without a problem. Yeah, and, and, and as I say, we will make the, you know, sometimes we regret 40 pounds we've spent on something that's turned out to be rubbish and we don't regret the, the 250 euros for something that we know we will treasure forever and we will look after and that will bring us a lot of pleasure right and and that that there is always going to be that kind of um relativity ty says you have to realize that most of the price is marketing i have a feeling we may need to do like a kind of special episode where we just bring some of you you know some 
some some of the some of the more more verbose amongst you, and we we just kind of talk about this. Let's have a final sniff of the mir. Um, It, it it's it's kind of not doing anything up here, okay? I don't I don't see any light bulbs popping or flashing. I don't see any great interesting, enticing, layered images. It's it just feels really, really quite superficial. And very pleasant and wearable in a in a kind of safe, forgettable way. Anyway. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for the comments. We will let YouTube do its thing for a few minutes and then we will come back uh, with a new flanker from a house that still doesn't really do all that many flankers. But anyway, this is a new one from them. See you in a bit. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye now.